John and last week when we ended my hope was that your minds were all over the place and I'm hoping that your mind will stay that way until we get to somewhere around John chapter 14 and then we start putting it together like a jigsaw puzzle but no worries if you start to put it together we have had the benefit of many Bible studies been exposed to many other lessons than John. So if we start putting it together before, then joy. All right, so let's do some quick run through. We spoke last week about the book of John. We spent some time on the author, John, around Asia Minor, around Ephesus. Spent a lot of his, um, his audience, found a lot of his audience. Um, John emphasized the deity of Christ, and that's what we're focusing on. Remember, the big question is, can we, from this study, come away with the conclusion that John would have us to, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Some things to remember as we read is, one, that the book is one book, is one letter. For convenience, it is split up in chapters and verses, but it is one letter. So bear that in mind, that the thought... John didn't just write some things at the front and somewhere along the line he wrote some other things. It is one thought process. And if we remember us writing anything, you start out, you start out telling us some things and you develop the thought and somewhere towards the end you will come to a conclusion. You will help us to, if, if you were following, tracking it well, for us to get to see where you're going. Um, my studies in librarianship, we had to read some, like, 440, 45 books for some studies. What we would do is read from the back. We'd get, what is it you're telling us? And then we go search for the evidence. So that is, if it is written that way, you should get to some point to see what are you talking about. So keep that in your head, that it's one letter. All right? Keep in mind that the prophecies that John tell us about, that Peter tells us that, look, these prophecies in old time didn't come by the will of man. They were God-breathed, they were God-inspired. It is God who have them to be recorded. So these guys didn't just write their life experiences. The accounts we get are because God would have it to be recorded. The recording of the prophecies, um, and that is the, 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 the gospel that we have. When we go to Timothy, Timothy says that these things, that he's writing, that God, what God has recorded for us is that these are men of God wrote as they were what? Moved by the Holy Spirit. So the account we are reading is, we are to remember that this is what God would have us to learn about this period, about this topic, about this, this incident. This account that we are getting is because God would have us to learn about it. I want to keep that in the head. And John in writing to us, comes from the point of view of the prophets. So again, the community that John was writing to at the time would have already established that the prophets are an authority from God. Just want us to bear in mind, keep that going. Now we're not just reading in isolation. So, when we read, for example, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, um, I'm going to need four passages read, so um, I'm begging some help. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. May I read it? Yes, please. Okay. Malachi 3. Hold on, it's coming with the mic. Okay. 
see, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. All right. So John the Baptist coming. When, when for example, Andrew says, we have found. It's not, oh, John said some things that tickled my ear and it sounds plausible. There are signs identifying marks that Andrew could have seen and said, ah, we have found. We have trusted in John. Now, do we remember that one of the reasons Herod had a challenge killing John was that John was revered as a prophet among the people. Yeah. Let me just pause. We can't leave chapter one. We have to bring it all with us as we go forward. So John is revered by the community as a prophet. And John is prophesied. So the, 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 the history and the religion is wounded together. And so up until this point, the prophets, the law and the prophets is what the community had. And so if John is saying, hey, this is the son of God. If uh, the prophecies, if, 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 if it is that they know that God has left this record for us then there is no, what I, the point I want to get across is that there is no questioning from the people then of the authenticity of the prophecies and of John the Baptist's testimony. Up to that point, there is no challenge. Mm -hmm. Everybody accepts that the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Malachi, these are authentic prophets. What they say are God's word. No challenge up to that point. None. All right? Did? Okay. So, we looked at last week about, um, John emphasized that Jesus is the word, the beginning, the creator, God's son. I'm just running so we bring chapter one with us. Then we said all things created through him. And we went back to Genesis. Look at in the beginning, God. We're remembering, right? I'm watching the faces to see. And then it says grace and truth. And we said again, the established rule was the Old Testament. The prophets, the law and the prophets, established, unquestionable, accepted. All right? And this is where the departure comes. That the law came through Moses. But that conjunction tells us why. We're about to make a departure. There's something about to change. There's something different. There's a contrast. Yes, they establish what we know, what we accept, what we, what we have lived by, yes, no challenge. But, why but? Something is about to change. So the law came through, but grace and mercy came through Jesus Christ. Amen. So then, question, John, what are you telling us? Because you're about to introduce to us now Jesus Christ. So we are about to see, not only learn of the departure, but see the personage, the embodiment of the departure. It begins now that the mind needs to know what? Graduate from the law to grace and truth. Good? We're good? Okay. We looked at this last week. We talked about the Old Testament, including Moses saying, Jesus will come. Listen to him. Jesus Christ comes and he demonstrates, and we are going to see this, the superiority of him over the Old Testament. We are going to read some more. And if you go back to Matthew chapter 5, Jesus Christ identifies which law is superior over. The one that says you shall not kill. Shall commit adultery. No swearing. You must love your neighbor. So we're not confused as to what was Christ identifying and, 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 and indicating his superiority over, making sure. Now, why am I saying this? Remember, the system, the accepted system known, used, trusted up to this point is this law. John is saying, hey, the law came through Moses, the lawgiver, the respected lawgiver, the one you know, the one you trusted your fathers, but... All right. So John says, 
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So, what about all the many animals that were slaughtered, killed before? John says, look upon, see, acknowledge, accept that this is the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. So then we need to play in our minds, put yourself back in that community and say, but all my life, all my history, all that I know, calculate all the way from Egypt, 400 years, and we're coming to this point. This is what we know. You need, Leviticus is a whole book of sacrifices telling us what to do depending on the different sins. Mm. But now, when we read in Hebrews, we connect the two, it says it's impossible for the blood of animals to fix sin. So, but I if I am living in that community, I don't know this. I don't know this yet. What I know is that if there's a certain sin, I need a turtle dove or I need a, a, a sheep without blemish, whatever the sacrifice is, to, to go for atonement. I don't know this. But we are learning this because we're fortunate to live in this age that the writer of Hebrews is saying it was impossible. It is 